things have wintered up a little bit since my last lens review video, but today is a very nice mild day. I'm gonna go out, shoot some stuff, show you a lens, but first, I'm gonna have some poutine. This time, we're gonna take a look at my very first Takumar lens. Well, here it is, the super multi-coated Takamar 35mm f3.5. I have an earlier video about the 28mm sibling of this lens, and you should probably check it out. The optical design of this lens is quite a bit different from that one, the 35mm being much simpler. With only five elements and four groups. This is a very compact lens, even smaller than my adapter. And that's one of the things that blows me away about the classic Takamars. You can easily bring a set of primes with you wherever you go. This model was first produced in 1971. It features a five blade aperture that goes from f3.5 to f16 and a 49 millimeter filter thread. The minimum focus distance is about 45 centimeters or a foot and a half. Now, I originally picked up this guy to experiment with free lensing. So I didn't even have an adapter to connect it to my camera. I ended up getting a Spotmatic film camera and this lens went to work on that body. Well, actually it didn't. It was the 28 millimeter that became my go-to. Anyway, let's take a look at the shots that I snapped around the neighborhood. I pretty much just set the lens to F8 and used zone focusing for most of these shots. You can see the odd pentagonal ghost creep into the scene. Contrast is, okay. It looks to be a fairly sharp lens, especially in the center. Let's take a little bit of a closer look. First up, we have my makeshift sharpness test card. On the left, we have the shot wide open and on the right at 5.6. In the middle, they're about the same and not too bad. At the corners, things get a little rough. What's interesting is that wide open, the spherical aberration seems to overcome the chromatic aberration, which doesn't really go away at any f-stop. Here's my grid, and oh boy, there's some notable barrel distortion. To me, it seems that the image quality of this lens suffers on account of its size. There just maybe isn't enough glass there. Even though I would say that it's a relatively sharp lens, it does suffer from a whole host of problems towards the edges. In terms of value, I think this currently might be a little bit of an overpriced lens. I got mine for only about 30 bucks, which I think was quite reasonable, but it seems to be demanding double or even triple that these days, and I'm not too sure if it's justified. Similar to my thoughts on its 28 millimeter sibling, I don't think this lens performs well enough for today's digital sensors, yet it's still too good to have those flaws that give a vintage lens real character. I think that the super multi-coated Takamar 35mm f3.5 would live its best life on a film camera body, stop down a bit, out on the street, and shooting from the hip. Well, we've reached the end of this video, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on this lens in the comments below. These vintage lens videos are definitely the most popular on my channel. And moving into 2022, I plan on stepping these videos up and giving you more of a comprehensive look at these gems. So I hope you subscribe and stick around for more. I'll see you then.